Steely Duffy. Represent, represent. No, no. <laughs> Our only New Zealand. Oh, okay. 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 Some code that does that in the video game, and I thought it would be it's a pretty ideal thing for doing that accelerate. So uh, that's what I spent most of the time doing is um, getting that working. So it runs on the interpreter of accelerate. Now, for those who don't know, um, accelerate is a DSL for um, for uh, a, a, a simple language, uh, quite a cut down language for doing array computations. So I've been working on that with um, Trevor and Manuel mostly. Um, and uh, then I thought, well, I'll, I'll do a bit um, on the, um, the back end, the uh, turbo back end. But uh, I ended up uh, just understanding some of the uh, code. So I didn't actually get any code written for that, but um, I'll carry on with that another time. Uh, the other thing that I did this weekend is I showed a couple of people how uh, the uh, MIX PAP iterative package works, which is a chunked XML parser. Um, and uh, out of that, um, a couple of people asked me to uh, do a blog about um, how to do coroutines in Haskell, which is actually really easy if you know, if you know how. So uh, um, I'll do that sometime. I think that's pretty much it. Thanks. Are you ready, man? I'm going to start some new stuff. You're going to start some new Okay. So, now I'm I'm going to follow you where I can do it in a minute. Because I know you love doing talks. Oh, I'm a dummy. I'll become best. You should see the happiness. Thank you very much, Ben. So, me, Eric, and Ben were hacking on DDC. And make patches to be a TV day, so 20, 20 other patches, 20 other patches, yeah, small patches. <laughs> so I, I've been busy rewriting the um, core type checker. Yeah, so I, I've got uh, typing rules that I've written in paper and thesis about, and most of those are implemented <laughs> in the original, in the original compiler, but uh, not, not very easy to understand and didn't check absolutely everything. And then the core type checker was mashed up in this other core pass, and they should really be separate. So I've been separating that stuff out, um, re-implementing the core type checker, and then auditing that against the typing rules. So now it's actually right. So I'm kind of solidifying the kernel of DDC. Uh, so Eric was hacking on LLVM. We're getting a new LLVM backend, which is coming along nicely, I think. Which is going to replace our existing C backend. Uh, and then Ben was working on uh, list comprehensions, so parser kind. So we have some support for Haskell sugar like list comprehensions, but it's not complete. And then I've got hacking on that. Are you going to bring back the monadic file, monadic comprehension as well, apart from list comprehension? Wait, what's a monadic comprehension? It's apparently out there because there's this previous version of monad used to have list comprehension on C. Yeah, it's exactly the same syntax and it would work. Instead of having to write return at the end, you replace it having to do the actual list comprehension. Mm, didn't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so DDC, the cycle already has do notation. You can use that for monads. So we can support monadic stuff work. Um, if you just want to use list monads or parser combinators or things like that, it's just uh, we try not to use them for just state and IO. For lots of reasons. Um, so, anyone else who wants to talk or find me? You ready? Yep. You're ready. Yeah. Alright, this is nine pages. Can you get to the background before you post what you're doing? Sure. So, uh, 
I think I, everybody knows now, but I'm very, very new to Haskell, but I've been hacking on the LLVM backend for uh, a couple of years now, working in uh, register allocation. And um, a few people have pointed out to me that the GHC LLVM backend uh, produces some pretty poorly performing code in some circumstances, um, in a lot of circumstances, unfortunately. <laughs> and and the cause of this is basically that the um, the register allocator is making really terrible decisions about where to uh, load and store the memory. Um, so over this weekend, I've been working on uh, some techniques to reduce the, the register pressure in the allocator, but also um, I've been uh, predominantly working on a diagnostic tool that would allow us to render the register pressure in a, um, a function so that we can actually get a handle on why the allocator is making bad decisions. Um, I have a demo, which is always dangerous. Let's see if this actually works. See if I can turn it to the left. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, for those who don't know, it, this was um, this was a snippet given to me um, as an example of a. Of particularly bad um, bit of code generation. This is the LLVM intermediate representation, if anybody uh, is familiar with it. Yes. So it's a, <laughs> yeah. Um, static single assignment form intermediate representation. Uh, basically, you think of it as sort of a, a type risk assembly um, with this SSA property. So variables are only ever defined in one place in the code. Um, I have no idea where this kernel came from. But it produces really nasty output code. If we yeah, it'll be a quick call. Generate the code for a quick call. If you don't have parallel Haskell, all right. Roman gave it. Did Roman give it to you? Yeah, Roman gave it to me. Yeah, that's really fun. Okay. Um, so if I generate some code for this. Uh, Um, the code for this has just an absolute ton of um, spills. You can see them all. Uh, one of the neat features in the LLVM backend is that it will annotate your assembly and tell you where it's doing reloads for spills and everything. What so is this, a spill? So a spill is um, uh, the other feature of LLVM assembly, which I should have mentioned. Um, is that uh, you, you don't have a fixed number of registers. You can just pull registers out of the air as though there were an infinite number available to you. Um, of course, when you're actually compiling for a target machine, you don't have that. You have a fixed, pretty small number of registers. Um, and the way the compiler resolves that is that it has a mapping pass where it maps the virtual registers down onto the physical registers. And of course, there won't be enough physical registers to satisfy demand in all cases. If you run out of physical registers, what you do is you start copying from physical registers to locations on the stack, and that's called spill. Um, you avoid it as much as you possibly can because going out to memory costs you a lot, but it's impossible to avoid in all cases. LLVM's backend tends to generate particularly nasty register allocation scenarios at the moment, and so that's what we're looking into fixing. So we have lots and lots of reloads and stores here. But getting a handle on what's on the connection between your virtual registers in the machine IR and this is really, really difficult. Um, so the idea of this diagnostic tool was that we would be able to run a command and let me see if I can find it in my history here. Um, so I'll recompile that. And you see you've got this little bit of output running register pressure pass. And I now have a HTML file, which 